at the Iron Man chapter 5, we're up to page 109. So, yesterday the Iron Man had been on fire. The monster stared down and the Iron Man smiled up out of the midst of the flames. The flames became fiercer, the grid became red hot. The Iron Man's hair and elbows and toes became red hot. His body became first blue, then black, then began to glow dully. He was getting red hot. Still he smiled. He smiled up at the monster and still the flames grew fiercer. And now the Iron Man was entirely red hot. Pretty soon he was almost white hot. And still he smiled. Out of the white hot eyes and with the white hot lips. And all the time the space bat angel dragon stared down in astonishment. But now the fuel oil was all burned away. Suddenly the flames died, flickered and went out. The white-hot Iron Man sat up, stood up, got stiffly off his glowing bed and began to walk to and fro on the sand, cooling. He cooled slowly. He went from white to orange, from orange to red, red to black, as he walked, coolly swinging his arms. Now at last he spoke to the monster. Hmm, if you can't bear to be made red-hot like me, then you are weaker than I am. And I've won. And you am a slave. The monster began to laugh. All right, he roared. Build the fire and I'll lie on it. He laughed again. He knew the Iron Man couldn't build a fire the size of Australia. But then his laugh stopped. The Iron Man was pointing upwards at the sun. There's the fire for you, he shouted. Go on, you go and lie there. Go and lie on the sun till you are red hot. The monster gazed up at the sun. He felt strangely cold suddenly. But how could he refuse? All right. And they set off. With slow, giant wing beats, he lifted his immense body off the earth and flew slowly up towards the sun, while the whole earth watched. Slowly he covered the distance getting smaller and smaller as he went. At last he landed, a ragged black shape sprawled across the sun. Everybody watched, and now they saw the monster begin to glow. Blue at first, then red, then orange. Finally his shape was invisible, the same blazing white as the sun itself. The monster was white hot on the sun. Then they saw him returning, a blazing shape tearing itself off the sun. The shape became red as it flew. It was writhing and growing larger. Slowly once more it became the black bat wing shape of the dragon flying back to earth, down and down, bigger and bigger, cooling as he came until, bump, he landed, this time much more heavily than before, on Australia. He landed so heavily that all over the world the bells tumbled out of church towers and birds' eggs were jarred out of their nests. The monster stared down at the Iron Man. But it was hardly the same monster. Its horns drooped. Its face was wizened and black. His claws were scorched blunt. His crest flopped over limply and great ragged holes were burned in his wings. It had been terrible for him on the fires of the sun. But he had done it, and here he was. The fires of the sun are far, far hotter than any fires here on earth can ever be. There, he roared, I've done it. The Iron Man nodded, but his answer was to signal to the engineers. Once more they poured oil into the trough under the grid. Once more they lit it. Once more the flames roared up and the black smoke billowed up into the clear blue. And once more the Iron Man stretched himself out on the grid of the raging furnace. The space bat angel watched in horror. He knew what this meant for him. He'd have to go once more into the sun's flames. And now the Iron Man's hair and toes and elbows were red hot. He lay back in the flames, smiling up at the dragon. And his whole body was becoming red hot, then orange and finally white like the blazing wire inside an electric bulb. 
At this point the Iron Man was terribly afraid, for what would happen if the flames went on getting fiercer and fiercer? He would melt. He would melt and drip into the flames like so much treacle, and that would be the end of him. So even though he grinned up at the dragon as though he was enjoying the flames, he was not. He was not enjoying them at all, and he was very frightened. Even the engineers who were hiding behind thick asbestos screens over a mile away along the beach felt the hair singeing on their heads. And they too thought it was the end of the Iron Man. Perhaps they'd poured in just a bit too much fuel oil. But at that very moment, and the very second that the edge of the Iron Man's ear started to melt, the fuel was used up and the flames died down. The engineers came running down the beach. They saw the red-hot Iron Man getting off his fearful bed, and they saw him moving to and fro on the sand, cooling off. At last, the Iron Man looked up at the dragon. He could hardly speak after his ordeal in the flames. Instead, he simply pointed towards the sun and jabbed his finger towards it as he gazed up at the monster. That's twice, he managed to say. Now it's your turn. The monster did not laugh. He set up from the earth, beating his colossal wings, writhing his long ponderous body up into the sky towards the sun. Now it was his turn, and he didn't laugh. Last time had been too dreadful, but he went. He couldn't let the Iron Man win. He couldn't let the Iron Man of the earth beat him in this terrible contest. So all the telescopes and cameras of the world watched him flying into the sun. They saw him land amongst the flames as before, and as before, they saw his great ragged shape like an inkblot sprawl over the centre of the sun. They saw him begin to go red, then orange, and at last they could no longer see him. He and the sun were one blinding whiteness. He'd done it again, but what was the sun burning him up? Had he melted in the sun? Where was he? No, here he was, here he came, slowly, slowly down through space, much more slowly than before. His white hot flying body cooled slowly to red as he came, and as he grew larger, coming nearer, he finally became once more black. And the great black shape flagged its way down through space until... Bump! Heavier than ever. He landed on Australia. This time the bump was so heavy it knocked down certain skyscrapers, sent tidal waves sweeping into harbours and threw herds of cows onto their backs. All over the world, anybody who happened to be riding a bicycle at that moment instantly fell off. The space bat angel dragon landed so ponderously because he was exhausted. And now he was a very chained monster. The fires of the sun had worked on him in a way that was awful to see. His wings were only rags for what they had been. His skin was crisped, and all his fatness had been changed by the fires of the sun into precious stones, jewels, emeralds, rubies, turquoises, and substances that had never been found on earth. And when he landed with such a jolt, these loads of precious gems burst through the holes scorched in his skin and scattered down onto the Australian desert beneath. But the Iron Man could not allow himself to pity the space bat angel dragon. He signalled to the engineers. Round three, he shouted. And the engineers began to put oil into the deep pit again. But what was this? A booming, wheezing, sneezing sound. An enormous whooping sound. The space bat angel dragon was weeping. If the Iron Man got onto his furnace again, it would mean that he, the monster, would have to take another roasting in the sun. And he couldn't stand another roasting. Enough, 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 he roared. No, no, replied the Iron Man. I feel like going on. We've only had two each. It's enough, cried the dragon. It's too much. I can't stand another. The fires of the sun are too terrible for me. I submit. <laughs> then I've won, shouted the Iron Man, because I'm quite ready to roast myself red hot again. If you don't, then I've won.